Hello everyone, today's game is between Victor Korchnoi with the white pieces and a player named Jay Pallison with the black pieces. This game took place in 2005. The purpose of this game is to show you another plan in the Dutch defense against uh, the Stonewall uh, in particular. And um, Korchnoi uh, is interesting for his, uh, his play against the Dutch defense as he uh, will sometimes use anti-Dutch systems, which can be quite effective, especially in this age of uh, engine use. Uh, it's good to know some uh, sidelines that are not necessarily uh, bad or unsound, but that at least you have a good chance of leading your opponent <clears throat> into unfamiliar territory. Sorry about that, phone ring. So, this game started out D4, F5... From Pallison, Knight C3. So instead of the traditional C4 or G3 going into uh, traditional lines, classical lines, we have Knight C3 with the immediate <coughs> threat of E4. And I like to show you this line because it's easy uh, to catch on and uh, remember. So E4, immediate threat. Now, there's basically two reactions that you're normally going to see. One is Knight F6. And the other, other is uh, the immediate d5 clamping down on the e4 square. So d5 was played and then Korsnoy immediately uh, played bishop f4 taking over the dark square diagonal. Um, going back, d5 is sort of in a small inaccuracy because uh, it kind of tips black's hands uh, too quickly and allows black white to immediately play this move. So if you see d5 immediately place your bishop uh, on f4 and exploit the dark square more accurate is knight f6 in this situation whereby bishop f uh f4 is not uh is effective because the um, dark squares haven't been weakened to uh, such an extent for an example um black can play e6 here for instance e6 knight f3 and let's say bishop b4 or even bishop d6 here. Okay, another idea he can play is just simply d6. Opposing the bishop, and he could even maybe later on transpose into a Leningrad if he gets an opportunity. So, let's say knight f3, h6. Let's say queen d3, for example, and move like g5. Bishop is embarrassed and has to move back home all right so that's just an example so knight f6 kind of keeps um black's intentions hidden a little bit longer so now white has to make a move he can make you know move like knight f3 and again the cat and mouse game can continue where instead of just committing to d5 i mean he could play that but he can you know delay a little bit longer play maybe like e6 uh for example See what um, white is going to do again. White might play a move like g3. And seeing what white's uh, black's going to do, etc. So, in other words, it's better for black just to wait instead of just lashing out with d5. Alright, this gives black, uh, a white rather clear place uh, to put his bishop. Now knight f6 comes. E3, and now bishop E6, knight F3, and C6. So you might say, hey, what's the big deal with, uh, you know, what's wrong with black's position? Well, <clears throat> again, one of the uh, problems uh, in the stone wall is this bishop right here. Uh, obviously uh, locked behind this pawn chain and combined with the weakness of these dark squares, all right, gives... Um, you know, white a nice positional and strategic advantage going forward. Uh, by the way, if black just tries to go for the bishop at this point, then just simply bishop e5. So knight f3, c6 was played, and now black pretty much has a stone wall set up. Bishop d3, and now you see the pressure here, so it's hard for black to make this maneuver 
because he has to protect this pawn on f5. So g6. So now the bishop is definitely locked in. Korsnoy immediately plays h3. I don't know why I keep saying immediately as if I know the timing of the moves. Like if he just, you know, did it right away. It's just a habit. But <laughs> Korsnoy played h3. And um, <clears throat> his intention is to play g4. One of the, uh, again, another knock on the uh, Dutch defense in general is the weakness that is created around the king after the move f5 is played. And you can see that here. The king here like this in the middle. King is a little drafty. Right. Another general principle that you have to remember, too, is if you have a lead in development, as Korchnoi does here with the white pieces, you want to open up the position. So that's what you see here. You have four pieces developed on the white side, only two on the black side. All right. So the only uh, thing that is keeping white from exploiting that lead in a uh, piece development is the fact that the position is closed. Therefore, Korchnoi adopts the strategy of opening the position. So he's going to play H3 and play one of his breaks g4 the other break is c4 but for him to play c4 he would have to move this knight and then play c4 where it's easier for him to keep an eye on the e4 square play h3 and g4 and he already has his bishop pointed toward the king side so it all makes sense logically to make the break in that direction knight bd7 is played g4 and now knight e4 is played why not win a pawn with f takes g4? Well, the reason is, is because this bishop is unprotected. And knight g5 would just be played. Then after bishop g8, then simply h takes g4. And um, white has an excellent position as, a, as the um, game starts to open up <coughs> for him in his pieces. He has the h file open for his rook. And there's already the terrible threat of bishop uh, g6 check exploiting the uh, position of this rook here. This is why white played knight e4. Excuse me, black played knight e4. Of course, you know, he played knight g5, attacking the bishop. Knight takes g5, bishop takes g5. Notice how, um, of course, you know, removes the issue of the knight being on e4 for black, which is something that black normally likes to have in the stone wall. F takes g4. H takes the uh, G4. Of course, this has to favor White, right? All this opening up of the position. Uh, his rook is developed on H1 without even having the move, and the F file is now semi-open. Again, Black is behind the development, so this is a net positive for White. Now, the threat I mentioned before is on the table. This threat of Bishop takes G6, exploiting the fact that if H takes G6, then Rook H1 will take the Rook on H8. Therefore, black tries to rectify that situation by playing bishop g7, protecting the rook here. Okay, however, he fails to see the move rook takes h7, which is simply, um, uh, which simply loses the rook after bishop takes g6, exploiting again the uh, um, unprotected uh, king. So, for instance, bishop f7, then bishop takes h7. So, this is why after rook takes h7, bishop f7 was played. This tells us that instead of playing bishop g7 here, bishop f7 should have been played here to uh, deal with that tactic. And then play could have continued, of course, uh, with the idea of queen e2 and then castling um, queen side. Or queen d2. But I like queen e2 better. Castle queen side. Um, with a nice advantage. So he, he missed his tactic. And now he played bishop f7. A little after the fact. And of course. The rook does jobs. So he rather lose the rook than. Uh, lose the bishop than the rook. King g8. Rook takes f7. By course knowing the rest is just a, a clean up job. Queen f3. Knight f6. Queen side castle. Queen d7, rook g1, holding on to the uh, pawn. King g7, bishop drops back. Of course, g5 was threatened. Again, notice how Korsner is continuing to open up the position to exploit his lead, uh, not only in material, but in development. Knight d5, strong uh, tactic right here, exploiting the fact that this knight is pinned by this bishop on e5. So if queen takes, of course, 
queen would take and the black would just be down the queen because this guy cannot move king g8 so of course uh getting out of the pen and now queen e3 very powerful move now he says go ahead take the knight because he's going to capture uh right here so for example knight takes and then you just get mated after queen takes g5 and let's say king f7 then just simply queen g6 If queen takes d5, then mate is going to happen, but it's just going to be a little longer. So queen takes g5, and again, if king f7, queen g6, king e6, and the pair of bishops is felt. Okay, and that's just one simple line. So this is why the piece couldn't be taken because of this weakness here. So black decides to play rook takes g4. Of course, just a desperate move, rook takes g4, queen takes g4. And it keeps this protected, but this is not protected. And that's usually what happens in uh, <clears throat> positions that start to deteriorate. Is you protect one thing and something else goes wrong. It's kind of like keeping up an old car. Right? You replace the fuel pump, then the water pump goes. Right? You play, replace the water pump, right? Then the radiator goes. Then you replace that and the alternator goes and so on and so on. It's just like that with these bad chess positions. You protect G4 and now E7 drops. Okay? Knight takes e7 check, king g7, knight d5, again getting on this pin, queen g1, and king d2. This player could have been resigned, but he was been uh, had resigned, but he probably was just happy to be playing uh, Victor Korsnoy, a legendary chess player, especially by 2005, and he just played on as long as he could play without feeling like he was disrespecting the great player. That's what I that's what I would think. Um, I would have I would have been resigned <laughs> just out just out of uh, respect, but um, you know to each to each his own. Um, so anyway, uh, I like that game by uh, Victor Korsnoy. He got straight to business with this anti Dutch system. So what did we learn today? There's a nice little plan you could play against the uh, the stone wall is <clears throat> the bring your knight to c3 early or just against the Dutch uh, in general you don't know if it's going to be a stone wall but threaten e4 right away and this kind of takes control of the opening a little bit and brings it into more familiar territory as really knight f6 and uh, d5 are really going to be your only two um, uh, choices that you're going to face here and again if d5 which a lot of players will play just Keep in mind that dark squares are available and take that immediately. Bishop f6 and follow that up with e3 and, and knight f3. Real simple uh, uh, chess here. And since your knight is on uh, c3 already, follow up with a break on the king side. h3 and g4. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, quick video. Again, another plan that you can use, you know, start practicing uh, in your blitz games, you know, against, uh, yeah, uh, and, and surprise somebody that plays the Dutch, right? Don't go into the main lines, you know, play something on the sidelines. So I showed you two videos so far. One was in the Staunton Gambit, uh, 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 more rare, uh, rare idea instead of playing just the Bishop G5 variation. Try that G4 variation out and also try this. Maybe you run into somebody who plays a stone wall. Uh, try this uh, variation out that uh, uh, Corson, uh, Corsonoy uh, played. All right. So, again, please like and subscribe. Please uh, donate and support my channel. And um, also check the links below for DVDs slash books on the opening that I presented today, which is the Dutch Defense. And I'll see you guys on the next video.